Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. As you can tell, I am so excited for today's video. This is going to be the intro to my 2021 Pan Those Eyeshadows series. This will be the third year in a row that I'm doing this project that was created by Alexi. I'm sorry you can hear the kids playing above me. <laughs> I'm just trying to get things done, but if children in the background bother you, that happens a lot on my channel. I just filmed my finale to the 2020 version of this project and I really did poorly last year, but I'm feeling so motivated to kick some butt and pan some eyeshadows. I am feeling so motivated to refresh my projects. This is a project where you randomize five some people do six eyeshadows to work on and hit pan in. Now, last year I said 30 uses or pan, and I'm going to keep that for this year because I typically hit pan in an eyeshadow before 30 uses or around the 60 to 80 use mark. So if around 30 uses I haven't hit pan, but maybe there's a huge dip, I'll probably keep it in. But if at 30 uses it still barely looks used, I would take that opportunity to roll in a new shade to keep this project moving, keep it fresh, and work on a bunch more eyeshadows throughout the year. Now I do not want to pan a black eyeshadow, and an additional rule for this year is at least one of the eyeshadows in my quintet needs to be a non-cruelty free eyeshadow. I really need to start working through my non-cruelty free palettes in particular. They are the products that are, the palettes in my collection are what is going to be lingering longest as someone who does not like to declutter. I want to see some usage in those non-cruelty free palettes to eventually work them out of my collection as I am on a journey to be cruelty free through panning. I think that was all of the information I needed to tell you. I hope to do updates every month. I wanted this video to go up on or around Christmas day but I am late filming it. What's new? So I hope to have my updates on the 25th. So the first update should be on January 25th, will, which would be less than a month. And also I will have just started working on those eyeshadows, so I don't really expect pan in the first update. But from then on, I, I think you get it. I don't have a specific pan eyeshadow pan goal. I will share bonus pans of eyeshadows I hit pan in outside of this project and I'm thinking 21 eyeshadow pans in 2021. How does that sound? I'm not gonna be too strict on myself. Okay I'm going to stop rambling now. I have up my pretty random app. I have in the numbers 1 to 721. My spreadsheet should be up to date. I was checking it over not that long ago. I have 721 eligible eyeshadows. I removed eyeshadows that have pan in them and I hope I removed all the blacks though. Maybe not. So I need to prevent re-rolls and let's roll. I'm just gonna roll all five and then look at my spreadsheet. So, oh, you can't really see that. 599, 40, 218, 45, and the last number, keep in mind, one needs to be not cruelty free, so the number rolled last will be the one I'd be kicking out if I don't have a non cruelty free one, 358. 40 and 45 might be from the same palette. Okay, I like to keep the camera rolling to see if there are any surprises to potentially catch a reaction. So 40 and 45, let's do that first. Oh, see, 40 is Makeup Geek Corrupt. That is a black eyeshadow. I am just going to straight up delete that from my spreadsheet and we will re-roll that one. That also adjusted the all of the numbers. Hmm. 
I'm gonna undo that actually and keep the numbers as they were supposed to be and I'll delete it after this video because it also adjusts like the range if you will. So after I fix that shade 45 is I should be writing these down instead of telling you. Okay. Okay, I am so excited about that one. What are the chances? I don't want to sound too cocky, but maybe I can have a pan for the first update. Okay, here is a non-cruelty free, which is good. And $5.99. And then we have one more shade to uh, roll in as well. I can't forget that. Laura, you're gonna die. <laughs> I'm gonna die. Oh my god. Okay. We need one more shade. 161. Okay, my camera was having a little bit of a meltdown or like the connection to my monitor. So while that was cooling down or whatever it needed to do, I grabbed my five eyeshadows. I haven't looked inside all of these palettes, so I don't know exactly what shades everything is. I'm feeling really confident about some and really nervous about some others. So let's just go in the order I was putting them on my uh, post-it here. So first up is a Makeup Geek single in the shade Prom Night. So I have in my Ofra palette all of my Makeup Geek singles and I believe this is Prom... No, it isn't. This one. Okay, it's this taupey, purpley shimmer, very similar to a shade that I had in my color story, uh, like a, Mor a Morphe shadow that I had in my color story for my finale. It's like a taupey, purpley shimmer. I will swatch all of these. These eyeshadows are very old definitely need to be worked on so I'm not mad at that shade at all. Should I pile them right here? 218 is from my AVH Modern Renaissance and it's actually Tempura which has a pretty good dip in it because of course <laughs> Of course it does. It is the cream matte kind of sh setting shade. This was the one that I said I don't want to get too cocky, but I think I might be able to hit pan in that before the first update. I don't really know why I had to swatch it, but it's just a eyeshadow I will use to set my eyeshadow primer. I never get shades like that in this project. 358 comes from a non-cruelty free palette, the Wet n Wild Not A Basic Peach, and it says it is the sixth shade, so I'll do one, two, three, four, five, six. This is one of those mattes but has some glitter in it, like it's not a true shimmer, and it is just a peachy shade. This is actually the most peach shade in this Not A Basic Peach palette. These feel very dry, very powdery. I think with some consistent use, this shouldn't be hard to make pan on at all. Oh yeah, it's pretty much a matte. They say they formulate these types of shades with some glitter in them to help with blending, but I feel like if you had a good eyeshadow formula, you don't really need to do that. But yeah, just a basic peachy matte. At this point, drawing in my numbers, I was feeling a little cocky, a little confident, and then here comes the wild card. I've never used this palette. And she is bright. 
This is the Violet Voss Sugar Crystals palette. I don't know what shade this is. I pulled number 599 was Pear Berry. I'm so scared. Okay. Okay. Well, probably the best of the mattes to get. So it is the second matte and it is kind of like a burnt orangey peach shade but definitely has some vibrancy to it still. I was really worried it would be like this is a neon pink, a neon yellow. Like I I know that my camera doesn't pick up how truly neon some of these matte shades are. This I would call a neon as well. These ones are just vibrant. This one has a bit more like grunge to it if you will for it still being a bright matte. I'm not sure if you can truly tell like I know my monitor blows things out. I can't really tell until editing, but of the mattes, this is the best possible outcome. Thank God. But I still think this is going to be one of those shades that's a 30 use and then roll out. I don't think I'll be able to hit pan on this. Let me stop rambling and swatch it. First touch of this palette. I feel like I should have taken pictures first, but too late. Okay, this is going to pair really well with that Wet n Wild Peach. As you can see, it's a bit deeper. Definitely has some more vibrancy to it. And lastly is from a Cool Toned Neutral palette. This is the Pretty Vulgar Nightingale eyeshadow palette. This was from a BoxyCharm. And 161, the last number I pulled, corresponded to the shade Break Free, which is a shimmery white, like inner corner highlighting type of shade. <sighs> How did I get so lucky? I feel like this is a setup for what's to come. If you rem if you watched my series last year, I had pretty much all color all year and I had such a hard time. This is very white and bright, but is definitely a shimmer. Maybe I could use this on the lid occasionally, but I think I'll mostly use this as an inner corner highlight. So I will insert a better picture of what my color story looks like to start off with, but I'm feeling very confident, very happy. Will this go south at some point in the year? Who knows, maybe I have my one Not Cruelty Free eyeshadow, which is the Wet n Wild Peach one, five shades. Thank you, Panning God. See, they're already setting me up to have an amazing 2021 in terms of panning, at least. I hope my happiness is infectious and puts a smile on your face. I, I'm just so dang excited about this color story. Wow. Okay, I'm going to stop rambling and film some more videos before my husband drags me upstairs to deal with those crazy children of ours. Are you doing this project this year? Let me know. Did you film it? Is it on your Instagram? I'd love to see what shades you're working on. What are you thinking about this color story? I'm very happy as I've said 500 times. If you enjoyed today's video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up so that I know and I'll see you in my next one. Bye.